Have you ever looked up at a rooftop and noticed a round curved dish pointing toward the sky and wondered, how does that thing actually work? Satellite dishes have become a familiar sight across the world, enabling everything from television broadcasts to high-speed internet access. But behind their simple static appearance lies a fascinating blend of physics, engineering, and orbital mechanics. In this video, we're going to dive deep into how satellite dishes work, starting with what they are, the principles behind their design, how they communicate with satellites in space, and what goes on behind the scenes to bring that signal into your home. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, a satellite dish is a type of parabolic antenna. That curved dish shape isn't just for aesthetics, it's based on the parabolic curve, a shape and geometry that has a special property. It can reflect signals toward a single focal point. Imagine you shout at the inside of a parabolic bowl. The sound would bounce around and all converge on one point. The same thing happens with electromagnetic waves. When signals from a satellite hit the surface of the dish, the curved shape reflects them inward toward the focal point, where a device called the feed horn is located. This feed horn then captures the signal and sends it down a coaxial cable to your satellite receiver, whether it's a TV set-top box or an internet modem. But where are these signals actually coming from? They come from satellites orbiting Earth, specifically geostationary satellites. These are satellites that orbit the Earth at approximately 35,786 kilometers above the equator. At this precise altitude and speed, they orbit the Earth once every 24 hours, which means they stay fixed over the same spot on the planet. That's crucial because it allows satellite dishes on the ground to remain pointed in a fixed direction. Once the dish is properly aligned, it doesn't need to move to track the satellite. The satellite stays parked in the sky, constantly beaming signals down to the same region of Earth. That's why your dish doesn't need motors to move around like a telescope might. When a signal is sent from Earth to the satellite, it's called an uplink. These uplinks are usually sent from large ground stations operated by satellite service providers. The satellite then rebroadcasts the signal back down to a broad area on Earth called the footprint. This return path is called the downlink. Different satellites cover different footprints and each dish must be aimed precisely to intercept the specific satellite signal meant for its region. The signal that's beamed down is typically in the microwave frequency range, often in the Ku band or K band, which are ideal for penetrating Earth's atmosphere and carrying large amounts of data. Now let's talk a little about the components of a satellite dish system. The main part, of course, is the dish reflector itself, usually made of metal or mesh and coated to resist weather. Its job is to focus incoming radio waves onto the feed horn. That feed horn is connected to something called a low noise block down converter, or LNB. The LNB is crucial. It amplifies the weak satellite signal and converts it from a high frequency band to a lower one that can be easily carried over a coaxial cable into your home. Without this conversion, the original signal would be too weak and too high frequency for typical home equipment to process. Inside your home, the coaxial cable carries that signal to a satellite receiver, which decodes it and converts it into something usable, like a video signal for your television or data for your internet router. The satellite receiver has its own tuner and software that selects specific channels or data streams from the broader satellite transmission. In many modern setups, especially with internet services, 
two-way communication is needed. This means that your system not only receives data from the satellite, but also sends requests or information back. That can be done either via a separate uplink system or, in more advanced setups, with a two-way satellite terminal that includes a transmitter. You might be wondering what happens when it rains or there are clouds in the sky. This is where we encounter a phenomenon called rain fade. High frequency satellite signals, especially those in the Ka band, can be absorbed or scattered by moisture in the atmosphere. That's why satellite dishes can sometimes lose signal during heavy storms. To combat this, providers use error correction protocols and may boost the power of transmissions. Additionally, larger dishes can help as they collect more signal and maintain better quality during less than ideal conditions. Interestingly, not all satellite dishes are big or mounted on rooftops. There are also portable and mobile satellite systems used in RVs, ships, airplanes, and even remote areas for emergency response or exploration. These systems often use motorized tracking to maintain alignment with satellites as the vehicle moves. On the other end of the scale, massive satellite dishes at Earth stations can span tens of meters and are used for everything from deep space communication with distant probes to transmitting global television networks. In recent years, satellite technology has evolved significantly. Traditional parabolic dishes are still widely used, but now we also have phased array antennas, flat panels with electronically steerable beams. These are more compact, require no moving parts, and are increasingly used in newer satellite internet systems like Starlink, which use a constellation of low Earth orbit or LEO satellites. Unlike geostationary satellites, LEO satellites move across the sky, so the antenna must constantly track them. This marks a major leap in how we think about satellite communication, offering lower latency and higher speeds for modern internet needs. So the next time you look up at a satellite dish, remember that it's far more than just a metal bowl. It's a precision instrument designed to capture signals traveling tens of thousands of kilometers through space. It's part of a global network that connects continents, delivers entertainment, powers communications, and extends the reach of the Internet to the most remote corners of the Earth. And it all works thanks to the elegant physics of reflection, the reliability of orbital mechanics, and the genius of modern engineering. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.